And welcome everyone to a Scouts of Entertainment 2v2v2v2 today. Today's replay comes from Morris. Now I've helped you send me through other Reforged replays like this, or other Total War replays like Rise of Mordor, Rome 2, Napoleon Total War 3, just to name a few. There are links displayed in your screen, and also in the description below. You can also send me replays to my Discord at Scouts Reconnaissance. A link to that Discord is also in the description below. And if you're a YouTuber, there's also a self-promotion area for you to post your own videos to. I also have a PayPal option, subscribe to our Patreon, and stream as donation link if you'd like to support my work. I've also recently just added the YouTube membership option on my channel, and I also have some custom emojis and badges for you guys to enjoy for now, and I hope to add more perks in the future. But if those are options for you guys right now, then please remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, tick that bell for notifications, leave your own thoughts about this battle in the comment section below. And this will quickly highlight that 59% of my viewers are currently unsubscribed at the moment, so if I can end your subscription today, that'd be great. And with that, let's get into it. So, Morris is commanding the, the Wars of Erebor. He has some Ifoot Halberds here. Some Ifoot Warriors, looks to be maybe two or three units at most. We have some Ifoot Spears here. We have some Ifoot Ward Goats over here. No Ifoot Hammer Guard, I don't think. Axe Guard Erebor for sure. We've got some Ifoot Crossbows. I don't know about the Blacklock Engineers. We've got some Ifoot Axe Sowers here as well. I've already said Halberds. Ifoot Axe Sowers. Might have said that earlier. And that's all I can really make out there. We'll keep an eye out, of course, for Obsidian Guard, Highborns of Erebor, and Dragon Slayers of Ered Mithrin. I think he does have Dragon Slayers of Ered Mithrin somewhere around here. Anyway, his ally is Numenor, commanded by Ezio Everhart. We've got some Numenor and Shield Guard here, three units. We have some Seafarers and Indomos. Some Numenor and Vanguard here, two units. Some Belagor Archers here, two units. We've got some Belagor Pikemen next, two units. And Belagor Footmen here, three units of them. And it looks like the rest of the army is up here. If I'm following this right. We have some Numenorean Cohort. Looks to be four units up here. Strange place for them to be up there. I expect to see Steel Bows or Didium Shadow Bows, something like that. Now this appears to be the old map, where there is no pathway up to the, the rear of the mountain, or the back of the mountain. So we can move on to the next team. We have Darwinian first, commanded by Prokas. He has some Evelyn Infantry here. And we got three, four, five, six units of them. We have three units of Evelyn Marksmen, it would seem. We have some McQuindy Glade Masters here, McQuindy Pikes, so I think two units of them. And we also have a catapult here. So a good army there for Dewinian. No hammer guard though. He's gone really heavy on the infantry though. Next we have his ally, Isengard, commanded by Lonesome Cowboy. See a lot of familiar faces here. We've got some half orc Vanguard here, some Urukai Berserkers, some Nazgah High, Trolls of the White Hand, half orc Vanguard, Urukai Pikes mixed in with Urukai Infantry, it looks to be three units of each in this line here, or row. We have some Dunning Clansmen here, some Urukai Crossbows, two units, another unit of Dunning Clansmen, and two units of Warg Riders. Well, Warg Riders can be good, but um, on this map, iffy, depends on, when the, depends on where their opponent is. Anyway, we move on to the third team today, which is probably the team they're going to engage with. We have Khan, commanded by Numal. I haven't seen Numal in a while, but he is a veteran. We have some Variag Bowmen here, two units. Some Variag Warriors, also two units. Actually, just the one unit, my bad. We have some. We have a Hwacha. We've got some Nurad Footmen here. Looks to be one, two, three, four units there. We have some Nurad Halberds, I think three units there as well. Yep, some Nomadic Infantry, two units there, some Brotherhood of the Spear, Brotherhood of the Axe, but no Nerad Stormguard, I don't think, I didn't see them before, so it's a little bit strange he didn't bring them. Anyway, we come to his ally next, we'll keep an eye of course for hidden units, we have the Realm of Mirkwood, commanded by MP Beckamy 13 We have some Blades of Emendura here, some Elders of the Elven King, some Blades of Emendura again, some Spears of Evendor, looks to be two units there. A High Experiment. We have some High Earth Sword and Shields armoured up. We have some Blades of Evendor, High Lang, uh, 200 Heavy Swords armoured up. High Earth Sword and Shields armoured. We have some Blades of Evendor. High Peng Archers here, unarmoured. Some Wardens I'm on Luck, AP Archers. Don't have too many um, volleys, much similar to the Numenorean Steel Bows, so make their shots count. We have some Woodland Ground Patrol here, two units. The Amonlark does transform into a two-handed axe unit. I believe they're AP, but correct me if I'm wrong. Next we have the final team, the Realm of Mladeris, commanded by Mythic Yeet. Oh, it's good to see Mythic here. He's actually a Rise of Mordor player as well, guys, if you want to battle 
him over there, I think. We have some Emoto sentries. Assuming, of course, this is the same mythic yeet. We have some Emoto sentries over here. It's one unit. We have some Great Rinde. These guys here are armored up. We have some archers written down here. Two units. Some Eldemi archers. Some Eldemi swordmasters. Rune Iron River Wards here. Two units. Some Eldemi spearmen here. Two units. Some Emoto guardians. Three units. One of them is armored up. Because he ran out of money, probably. And finally, we have Gondor. Coming by Toki Marie. We have some Gondor Spearmen here. Basic model. Looks to be maybe two units, two or three units here. And I think two units of infantry mixed in there. We also have some more Gondor infantry over here. Looks to be, I think, maybe two units. We have some Citadel Guard here. Some mount, uh, mountains. Some Fountain Guard and some. We have some Fountain Guard and some Marksman Ke Andros here mixed in. And some more Gondor infantry on the end. Next we have some Wardens of the White Tower, some Gondor Archers, two units there, and some Gondor Militia here, two units. We also got some more Gondor Militia, so four units of Gondor Militia here total. Uh, don't really see this much Militia brought to a battle. This would have cost him a little bit, at least a thousand, he could have brought to, um, another Gondor unit, Gondor Spearman Infantry, or armed up all these troops here with that money. So we'll see whether or not this pays off for him. But for now, let's get this Battle Royale started. Enjoy. So, I don't think it's actually a grace, but the teams will need to get themselves into position. They need to determine who they want to fight. And so we'll come back once the lines have been drawn and the first shots are about to begin. See you soon. Well, Gondor has moved up. Erebor has moved down. Morris was about to fire. Now, what I'd do if I was Morris is I'd probably leave my crossbows here and bring up my second unit over here. That way, this, this first crossbow unit on our left here can shoot straight into um, Toki's army when it can moves up. But he probably should hold his fire here because right now he's just shooting at light tier troops. But mainly the crossbow unit here I was thinking could actually fire at the Matter Sentinels, which I got the name wrong before. If they try to run around here, at least the crossbows can fire a few volleys in there, maybe even drive them back. But we've got Ironfoot Halberds moving down, we've got Ironfoot Spears here blocking the pathway so Erebor's army is relatively safe. Ezio is moving down his Numerian Vanguard here which he should. The Vanguard here can get some good kills here in the Gondor Militia for sure. Solid charge there. They are down to 72. A full unit usually has 152. So 67 now destroyed almost half the unit in that one charge alone. I think Ezio needs to get these guys working as hard as he can. We've got some Unfoot War Goats coming in now. Yep, every charge really helps out their front line. Toki's plan is, is probably to tire out the front line defense. They'll make them sluggish and when they bring up the elites, these guys will succumb more easily to their mid-tier and heavy elite troops. Yeah, we've got some other essentials moving around here, but I don't think Morris needs to worry too much about that. And let's just go back over here for a second because these guys here are looking pretty close. Okay, we're just skirmishing away at the moment. We didn't miss anything, which is good. I will note that um, Protocast was the only player to actually bring an artillery piece. Which could be good or bad. I don't like catapults much these days. <laughs> Some people might know what I mean and why. And the rest of you will know I promise to release that replay soon. I just won't tell you when, but I will release it. It's uh, it gives you it gives me nightmares at times whenever I see a catapult now. Anyway, we have some Greenwood Rangers here moving around. I think MP brought them up a little bit too early, but he's fortunate that I don't think Lonesome Cowboy has the range on him with his crossbows, and the marksman are a little bit ways off yet. So MP is lucky in that regard. But um, yeah, what is a mistake that Numa probably is making is he's really stacking his ranks here. And while that line looks formidable, a good catapult hit like the one we just saw is not too good. Doesn't bode well for Numa's team in the long run. That's, that's not bad volley there. That's two good shots. We've got some Numaic infantry here. Varag Bowman also firing in.
And we've got the Black Powder Fox here coming in. Now, this is pretty good for the Watcher, but maybe I th maybe now I should put it on the hill here with the very Bowman or next to them. This is definitely the kind of target that would favour the artillery that is Watcher because the army is so spread out far out and the fire is so far spread out for the Watcher, the odds of getting a hit are actually pretty good. Not so much if your enemy is clumped up in one tight place. Uh, we've got some friendly fire here. They're, they're carving them up. Those poor halberds. Yeah, we saw that. That's from the camp charges earlier. We've got Eiffel Warriors here coming in. Axe Air Force standing by. Halberds being shot at, but have sustained any casualties as of yet. Eiffel Crossbows, both units here firing in. It looks like the United Sentinels are copping it. Grenon Rewards here, being shot at. Mythic Yeet charging in. His force is very exposed there to those crossbows. And for some reason, neither Gondor nor Mladis has their archers stationed close by, returning fire trying to drive back Morris's crossbows here. I mean, Morris has got a great position. Both his units can fire directly into Morris, not Morris's. Mythic Yeet's forces. I think uh, Mr. Gear has charged in a little bit too early here with some of his good quality troops. And he hasn't really brought up an answer here for Morris's crossbows. It's even strange if we've not really seen Morris seize the advantage here. He's got the higher ground, he's got the targets. He can seriously weaken the Mr. Gear's forces here, practically destroy them just with his crossbows alone. And then they only have Gondor to deal with. And then Gondor versus Erebor and Numenor together. You think he's charging any sentinels? Probably shouldn't do that. Definitely save them for later. And we also know Morris has iron foot axe throwers as well, so I'm surprised we're not seeing them in action either. Position them right next to the crossbows just to fire in. I mean, we're seeing some great targets here. Matter NL Elden, we saw Masters, Maris Guardians. I don't know if they've already sent in the Maris Sentinels as of yet. I don't think so. But yeah, Morris can win this battle much more convincingly. And the Gondol Infantry armored up. Sorry, the Gondol Infantry unarmored, I meant to say. The Amara Sentinels are trying to get by, but they're down at 13. Against Ironfoot Spears as well. They're collapsing. They're going to be no threat to Morris's army when this is over. Seafarer standing by. I don't know if these guys have ammunition. They got their axes out, so you'd think they used all their ammunition earlier. They probably threw it maybe even in the Amara Sentinels down below. Okay, the axe are moving forward. Definitely should be doing that. I don't think he has any numerous steel bows. I didn't see any earlier. He's got Belliger archers though. Yeah, uh, yeah. Both of the crossbow units probably should be firing in. And maybe keep the axe throwers in reserve when the Great Marine Danes show up. A lot of infantry just standing by, but again, this is unarmored infantry. It's um, I, I rank it just slightly better than orc fighter. It's not that great. Now the archers firing in. Now the archers are in doubt, don't have a shot, they don't have a target, but they do have a target on the crossbows. They don't have a target on Morris's front line here. They can fire into the axe cutter air ball. That's, that's a fair target to go after, the one in, in the distance of course. Okay, elding the archers here down to 50. I wonder who's shooting at these guys. The crossbows are shooting at them. And Morris should probably continue to shoot at them. They are Maris's best archer unit, with the of course the god Helm. Is the exception there. It looks like the Belgar Archers, we found them. They're up actually up here shooting down below. That's where Ezio put them. I was wondering where they were. We've got one unit out of ammunition. That's pretty 
good target to go after. I'm losing a few arrows though into the ledge there. Let's back over here and check it out. Okay, last guy has charged directly straight into Nirat to Khan. Jesus, it's in Nirat. Whoops. Alright, speed up just slightly. Now, with Isengard's forces so close, it's too risky to continue firing the catapult. The Urko Berserk is moving in, a full unit. The Pity Stalkers, here from Prorokas. They are targeting the Spears of Emendua. Now, okay guys. This catapult is proven to be very accurate this time around. Wargs down to four. So he's trying to charge in and get behind his enemy's lines here, but they were blocked by the Brotherhood of the Shadows. He's got two units of them. So it looks like the Wargs did some work there. But MP Beckney and Numel proving to be too much here for Isengard and Dorwinian. If I was Dorwinian and I had my Isengard crossbows nearby, I'd probably be getting my troops into an area where I could pelt the hell out of this blob here. Because it's just full of Mirkwood and Kandish troops. Guaranteed a hit, guaranteed some kills. Capo's obviously trying to hit it, but you know, it's not an exact science, and from that distance. Wouldn't hold your breath with a direct hit. You'd be very lucky. We've got Southern River Patrol here, two units. Just clipped them. And he's got a lot of good forces here. Just moves up his infantry. And Nazgahai in reserve. Many pikes also standing by. So Parokos has sent in the bulk of his melee infantry. And the Seldor Patrol is firing in. Infantry down to 50, fighting alongside here, the Evelyn Infantry. Patrol here might be out of ammunition. Yep, they got their swords out. Now their right flank is actually holding on here. I must rode off learned some Cowboys forces entirely. We saw that his centre and his right and his left flank collapse. This is his right flank. But his right flank is, is holding. It is impressive. So don't count out the Winnie and Isengard just yet. Let's have a look over here. Hang on. So I'm to go back over here and have a quick look. As you sent up some two units of belly footmen here to try and take out the Brotherhood of the Spear. Is it just Brotherhood of the Spear? I think so, yeah. Why would why would Numao just send up one unit of Brotherhood of the Spear alone? Surely these guys need it down here to fight Isengard and Dorwinian first. You know, win the battle in front of you before you pick your next fight. Don't spread yourself too thin. In any case, we've got Bellic Footman standing by. Airball Legionnaires, we didn't see them before. Two units standing by. And Axe sorry, Axe Guard Airball. I don't know if they used up their axes. They might have, given their position. I'm for crossbows not firing in. These guys here still have their bows out. Yep. Dragon Slayer standing by. Axto is also here. But not firing in. Okay, it's, it looks like they're slowly moving down. Now, this fight is actually dragging on a bit longer than I thought, than I think it has to. Only half 
Morris has got the high ground, he's got the position. It is a bit unfortunate that Amaris and Villanville don't seem to have an answer for Morris's crossbows or axe throws. They've got some archer units, but nothing that can really bring down Morris's men fast enough for Morris starts to decide to actually fire in. I think he's moving his men in, they have to do just that. And they're targeting the fountain guard. Even if they move into the fight, Morris has got a line of sight on them. Yep, there they come. Steady stream of axes. Give Morris a sort of clumped up his crossbows and his axe throws here. Has he clumped up two units of crossbows together? No, it's just the one. But still, you know, the odds of getting a hit are pretty good. But Mythic might have used up all these arrows here, I don't know. No, you still got two units here of Archers of Rivendell. They should be firing directly into Morris's axe throws and crossbows here. Okay, he's doing that now. It's good to see. It'll take a while for them to bring down those axles. I think Morris can safely use up all their ammunition before that happens. And yeah, Morris is picking his target well here. They both have Marine Dane. They're pretty bloodied up here, but they are Mythic Geek's best unit here. Now, the Axos are getting lots of hits, but they're only getting a 79. They've only lost six men. Quite a lot of arrows coming their way. Crossbow's also firing directly into him now. Okay. Crocus just lost their general. Oh, that's a bit odd. Quickly head back up here. See if the Belga footmen are holding the line. We've got Belga pikemen here standing by. We've got Brotherhood the Spear and we've got Greenwood Rangers here. Must have used up all their ammunition. Brotherhood the Shadows as well. Okay, looks like Ezio only has a, has a small force up here, holding the mountain pass. Looks like Brother of the Shadow might have some ammunition in this unit. Now, given that MP has come up this hill pretty much alone, suggests they're doing alright down here, and that Parochus and Lonesome Cowboy are on the way out. Actually, no. Lonesome Cowboy and Parochus still have a few units here. In fact, it seems that because of MP's pullout, with the rest of the Numa's forces, it seems to have helped Brokus and Lonesome Cowboys survive this. Brotherhood of the Axe down to 34. Okay, crossbows here down to 25. Well, I guess it's one of those um, mutually assured destruction deals, you know. Maybe they decided to call a truce and try and, <laughs> try and destroy Morris and Ezio. Because they do seem to be the biggest threat now in this fight. They have the largest the army at the moment. They have lost half their men. This is a strange truce. If this is a truce, it's pretty it's pretty weird. This usually involves everyone disengaging, whereas Numal and MP left some units here to fight to the death. Fendi Pikes. Destroying the Women Round Patrol. So, no, we'll see the Winnie and Isengard again later. Right now, they're actually pursuing MP's high paying archers. And they're targeting the Yokai crossbows. Good target to take out. Got some Gondor archers here. Not armored up. They're lobbing their shots, which is good news here for Morris. I think a lot of Ezio's army is actually intact. He's nice and down a couple of units at this stage. Axo is still firing away. Pray something changes in the course of battle, but defeat seems almost certain. I think they're trying to target the fountain guard. 
which are down to 91. Only half the enemy force remains. Are they firing or not? They just seem to... They've got the action, but they're not... It says they're firing. Yeah, see, they're doing that thing again. The Citadel Guard coming in. This is where the Axos can really give them the edge. The enemy yeah, okay. Mythic might have lost his general, but it's Madras, and their morale is pretty good even with the, even though the general is gone. So you know, you pretty have to you can always have to destroy Madras down to like twenty percent of any unit before they maybe waver and break. The morale of Madras is pretty much the highest tier in Reforged. It's so pretty much the same, I think, for Lotharian as well. Those are two factions that I don't see break very often. Yeah. What do they have left here? Got some Elden the Archers. We're still with ammunition, 28. We've got Marksman and Kier Andros, down to 60. I don't see anything else here. Also, the Amaris uh, sentries have already been sent in and been disposed of. Okay, congratulations to Toki, he broke through. They're chasing all broken units here. Better hurry up. I am surprised that Toki and Mythic managed to break through. Okay, here comes MP's forces. They're at the top of the hill here. He has moved up his running cohort and spear. He's fighting MP and Yumel on multiple fronts. I was a little bit concerned here for Ezio's army, but looks like he's still got a lot of his forces still intact. And we've got uh, Morris sending up his um, Dragon Size Air of Mithrim, which has definitely helped things. A pikeman need to be sent in here pronto. The Balaga archers could be rear charging the enemy forces right now. And I think they're out of ammunition, so the fact that Ezio's not bringing them up could do his, him and his team a great disservice later on. Best way to destroy enemy units is to attack them from multiple positions. It looks like Morris is trying to outflank the enemy anyway, which is good to see. Belgarites is making their move. Now it looks like MP might have divided his forces a little bit. Where are Delenian and Isengard? Pray something changes in the course of battle, but defeat seems almost certain. The Citadel Guard here. Vanguard are over here somehow. Okay, there's Delenian. And the remaining forces of Isengard. I don't know if Isengard's actually still alive. Oh no, there they are. They've got a few men here and there. But, Lone Storm Cowboy is still on the field. And the Whittian's actually looking pretty strong here. Elders of the Elven King that shooting at the Belgar Archers here. It's probably what you want instead of your Dragon Slayer's Red Mithrin. I wonder where MP will switch targets. He's not switching. Morris is not charging into these guys. They're like they're the most deadliest unit that they're facing right now. And instead he charges into the high-paying archers, exposing himself straight to the elders of the Elven King. Big risk, but he's lucky that MP's not seizing the opportunity. The 
this fight actually might come down to Erebor and Numenor versus either Dwinian or Gondor. I think it matter still does have a few troops here. Burger Park and broken. Alpha Crossbow is broken. It looks like Morris is just sort of trying to delay them a little bit. Now the Seafarers, I don't know what Ezio is planning to do with these guys, but he better do something with them soon, not leave them here. Okay, yeah, he's doing something now. Okay, I'll probably, I'll probably uh, tell Ezio to pull back a bit and just sort of turn to face the remaining forces of Gondor and Ladders. Don't bother with this fight between Mirkwood and um, Dorwinian Marzengard. Let them sort of fight it out to the end. Dorwinian will win this fight, but um, Ezio should let um, MP try and get as many kills as he can before he falls. You know, do some of the work for him. Don't send in his Balagar archers. That's you're better off to have some men later than not have these guys. Okay, Ezio pulled back his Balagar archers. He didn't send them into the fight, which is good. MP is trying to fight it out with Dorwinian, and the Elders of the Elven King are a great melee unit. You'd be surprised how many kills they can get in the right circumstances. As long as they can keep their enemy in front of them. And the kind of, the kind of troops they're facing right now definitely favours them. They definitely outclass the Elven infantry. They'll take a lot of. It might take Perus's whole army here just to kill these guys. Which would be good news here for Numenor and Erebor. Harping Ice is firing point blank into the Evil Infantry. We got some more pikes moving up the hill here alone. That's a mistake there from Barocus. Pikes should definitely be here to over help overwhelm the Elders of the Elven King. The infantry does need an edge. The pikes will definitely give that infantry the edge over the Elders. It also would mean fewer casualties here for Dolinian. Which is what you got to be thinking about at this late stage of the game. And as you guys send over some Belgar archers again, he shouldn't be picking fights prematurely. He should be letting Mirkwood and Dolinian go at it before he moves in. He's got his own battle to fight right here. Gondor and the matter surprisingly are still not gone and they do have a lot of strength still in them. They have lost half their men. And sending forces in like one unit at a time clearly is not benefiting their, their tactic here. Or their strategy. Could have done a, charge, a side charge into the fountain guard there, but now it looks like they're changing location. Changing direction, sorry. Yep, they turn. Now, the only truth to really worry about in this blob here is the fountain guard and citadel guard. Not so much the Gondor infantry and spearmen. They should be matching their enemy's forces here, sending in their units. Yeah, I really think Ezion Morris moved in too soon. They have really stressed themselves across this map here. The Dragon Sides definitely need to be engaging Gondor and Laris on the other side for sure. But if the Dragon Sides weren't here, then all the Ezio's forces surely would have been soundly defeated.
Pitney Clay Masters and Lonesome Cowboy, Nazca High. Nazca High is still alive. I thought, I thought they were gone. Quinney Pikes here, unit of 38 broken. That's devastating for Dominion. Ah, what is Morris and Ezio doing? They really need to let Dominion and Mirkwood kill each other. <laughs> shouldn't be getting involved in a fight that's not ready. For, that shouldn't be. Oh, no, bad up. <laughs> Basically, I'm trying to say that the fight over there doesn't concern them right now. They should be showing themselves with it. Firing straight into the dragon size here at Mithrin, also hitting the Nazca High along the way. Now, how's the battle going over here? I don't think it'll be going very well. And it's not. Tokyo has definitely turned things around here. Just when I thought Numenor and Erebor had them. The fact that they split their force really turns out to have hurt them quite a bit here. It could be their downfall. Marksman Candros are firing at a broken unit. Toki needs to conserve his ammunition. I think he's doing that now. It says they're reloading. Oh, they're shooting. Uh, they're shooting at broken troops. Wardens of the White Tower, a full strength unit. and Erebor are in trouble. Now I think it, it is the most team with the most kills that wins at the end of the day. But there is also of course the last man standing on the board. Neither side, neither team is actually camped today so whoever wins has done a good job. Marksman firing straight into the Nurenen cohort. Ezio should not be doing this. He's setting up one year at a time. This strategy has been devastating for them up until now. They should not be persisting with it. I hate to be critical of a player like this, but this strategy is leading them to disaster. Oh, thankfully he stopped. That's good. Take everything back there, Ezio. Nimrod and do have some troops here. Is it enough? I lean towards no. I don't think they have enough to hold back, to hold back and beat back Gondor and the remaining forces on the ladders. I think they're really pushing it. Okay, two players have just made a defeat there. I think that might be Darwinian and Lonesome Cowboy. Alrighty guys, the final battle is about to begin. Morris was the first to charge in, quickly followed by the Vanguard. Now Ezio has spread himself out a bit here. Just to sort of prevent Gondor from outflanking him. Or from outflanking both of them I should say. Now looking at the forces they're engaging with right now, Numenor and Erebor will win this fight here. The real concern is whether or not they can hold up against the Citadel Guard, the Wardens of the White Tower, the Marks of Cairn Andros, because you know those guys are pretty good and of a and are of a high caliber, and the Dragon Slayers are pretty damaged at this stage. They've been fighting for a while. I mean, it really helps that the Gondor infantry here is not armored up. It definitely makes Luminor and Erebor's job a lot easier to get through these guys. This is pretty smart here to combine the Pike and the Dragon Slayers, just to back them up, you know? The Pike will give the Dragon Slayers a slight edge, and it'll help them survive a bit longer. The Pike definitely got to move forward a little bit, they're sort of being held back. 
We were in the fight before. Okay, yeah, here they come. Found goes in at 18. Sit with the guard 82. Airball still has a general, I believe. Yeah, he's right there. And we got Vanguard here doing rear charges. That's quick thinking. Fighting guards down to five here, though, this unit. Try to shut him down. Probably should try and charge into the wardens of the White Tower. Well, they've been sent into the fight just now. That's where they are. Do some recharges with the Master McCandros for sure. Let's go into a Spearman. Probably shouldn't be charging into them. Slip to our guard here down to 45. Dragon Slayer is down to 13. Black of Harvey 27, and Numenor, I think, has lost their general. So it's looking a bit dicey here for Numenor. Looks like their forces are finally succumbing here to Tolkien. Time six feet it. I think this is going the way of Gondor here. Airboy is almost out of men. The general, I think, is still fighting after all this time. Yep, and then was on the verge of breaking. There goes the general. Yep. Okay, so Morris and Ezio got the most kills out of any team, so they win that award. Uh, Mythic Git and Toki win the award for Last Man Standing. Morris getting 2,152 kills there. Ezio Everhart, 1,399. Mythic Git, 859. Toki Marie, 996. Numal, 1,322. MP Beckamy, 13, 1,491. Parokas, 1,083. And Lonesome Cowboy, 1,296, a good kill count there for all players. Okay, looking at Erebors. Dragon Slayers 197, Iron Foot Spears 110, Iron Foot War Goats 160, Iron Foot Warriors 112, Axe Guard Erebor ranged from 145 to 287, Iron Foot Axe Sowers, each got over 140, 140, 159, Iron Foot Crossbows 197 and 265, and Iron Foot Spears here 119. So, well done to Mythic Eat and Toki Mabri on being the last team standing. It was a hard fought victory for them. Well done to Morris and Ezio for getting the most kills in the battle. And well done to all other players who did very well regardless. Thank you to Morris for sending in the replay. This is Scouts of Entertainment signing off. Catch you guys in the next one.